So today we're going to be talking about my HF GoBox slash solar generator. Now, I've always been in love with the idea of a go box from even before I got my technician license and started getting into ham radio. I would look on YouTube and I see all these great go boxes. The problem is 99% of them are VHF UHF. I'm never on VHF UHF. So when I got into HF, I got the 891 and I made kind of a go box. But it was basically just picking out the foam and putting the radio in it and the battery so everything had a neat little place to go. But I'd still have to take everything out and assemble it out in the field. I don't want to do that either. I want to just get out in the field and play radio. So I decided I'm just going to make my own. And I literally made this with the exception of a few parts. I made this by hand. There's only a couple other videos on YouTube with HF Go boxes, they're all neat, don't get me wrong, but they didn't seem very practical. A lot of them were uh, either in really big Pelican cases or they were in these 19 inch rack mount units that we typically use in music for rack mount stuff. And I'm like, who the heck is ever gonna carry one? You don't see anyone using them out in the field, uh, probably because it's a really fun build, but they're just not practical, so. I wanted to make a go box that was practical, lightweight, fun to build, and incorporated solar charging uh, because I've got a small battery in here, so we've got to be able to charge it on the go. Plus, I wanted to be able to do some other things with accessories. So let's uh, crack this baby open and see what we got. So before we look inside, this is one of the knockoff cases from Harbor Freight. I can't tell you what model it is because I peel the stickers off all these things because I want them to be all black. But I will tell you it is one size bigger than the very small one they sell. So let's crack it open and see what we got. Ha! So, got our Zygu G90, we got some watt meters, we got some switches, we got some power poles, we got some USB, and we got an antenna jack. So let's kinda go around this and talk about what everything is and why I did it this way. So like I said before, the idea of a go box has always intrigued me but I never saw anything that was like, I gotta have that. So I spent a lot of time just thinking about how I wanted to design this and actually use this. Obviously, first and foremost, we've got our Zygu G90. I mounted this in a way so I can swivel this up. I've got a kickstand down here so we can mount it. We can push the buttons, it stays rigid. We can actually use the radio. We can yank on the mic cord and it's not gonna go anywhere. So it's practical, but I can fold it back and close the lid when I'm done. The next thing is I wanted to be able to monitor not only my station power, but I wanna monitor charging. So I had to wire this up. I'm gonna do a build video after this so you can see every single step, uh, but I wanted to monitor uh, whether I'm charging solar or uh, off of uh, my charger. I wanna know what's coming in to the battery. So I wired this entire top, the, both of these power poles, this power pole is for solar in, this is connected to a charge controller and then it goes into the watt meter. This top uh, right power pole is just for my, my uh, home charger. So both of those are gonna go uh, into here but they're separate and you'll see how I wired that up in the, in the uh, build video. I had to have a switch on it because if I just had this hardwired to the battery, this meter would always stay on. This right here is the main station power that will give us power to these bottom two power poles and our USB. So we flip that on and these two bottom power poles are on. So like if you have an HT that takes 12 volt power like my Yaesu VX7R, we can take our radio, plug in the power poles, Turn the power on, and now it's charging. And now I can monitor my voltage here. You can see it's drawing 0.27 amps. So I can just leave this be, let that charge. Maybe I'm out in the field, and 
my iPad battery is getting low because of all the logging on the app Hamlog that I use. Well, now I can crack open my USB, plug that in, plug in my iPad, throw the switch. Now we're charging. Now we're drawing 0.65 amps. So I always know what my battery's doing. That's the main goal. Now I can turn this on, and this is not connected to any uh, usable power. This is only going to monitor power going into the battery, either from solar or my charging station at home. So that is awesome. Because you can't really monitor lithium iron phosphate batteries by the voltage. You really need something that's going to count the amp hours. So I can see the amp hours going out and I can see the amp hours going in. Because voltage is going to stay very constant until the very end. Turn on our radio. Now we're drawing 1.23 amps. I've got a 6 amp hour bio NO in here that I'll show you in a minute. So with just this configuration, I can get a couple few hours out of it. But by plugging in solar, uh, and I've got a couple solar panels from bio NO on the way that I'll be doing some review videos on. I've got a 100 watt and a 28 watt coming. I have a 100 watt solar panel, but it's a big, huge monster, and it weighs like 17 pounds. But I can get about 5 amp hours in from solar on a nice sunny day that you can keep this thing going all day. Even if I depleted the battery with five amp hours coming in, it would charge this battery in a little over an hour and I'm back on the air. So very, very cool. The other thing, I put a BNC connector here for my antenna with just a tiny little coax lead going to the radio. The body of the radio is underneath here. I was debating whether to drill a hole in the side or put one here and I, I opted to put one here that way. I didn't compromise the integrity. There are no holes whatsoever in this case. So should I get caught out in the rain, all I have to do is close this up. Everything is good. The tuner will tune anything on this as we know. So I can use like my Pac-10 9-to-1. Uh, I can use my K6ARK Mini 9-to-1. Uh, I can use the, you know any antenna I want. If I want to take the DX Commander Expedition out, I can. Just put a little adapter on there. Life is good. I'll slide this out and show you kind of the guts of what's going on in here. And uh, we'll see what that looks like. And the cool thing about this, because of the way I built this, this whole thing just slides out. So just a quick look at the guts of the radio. I've got a build video that's about 35 minutes long that shows way more in depth than I am going to do right now. But I just give you a quick spin around so you can get the idea. Uh, first, we've got our 6 amp hour bio NO battery just kind of resting underneath. Uh, I made it with two pieces of plexiglass that I, I ground down with an angle grinder to make the to make the shape. I've got some three inch quarter by twenty nuts and bolts as standoffs. This is a good idea from Chuck KK6 USY, so that was cool. Coming around this side, here's our battery connections. This is from the charger going into the battery, and this is from the uh, station power. I'm calling it. And then we've got our two independent switches. Everything's crammed in here. I kind of just threw it all together. There's <laughs> in the build video, you'll see sometimes I have power poles, sometimes I have wire nuts. I kind of just used what I had on hand. Around the back, you can see I used some legs to mount the body and also uh, stand it off from the plastic to because the heat sink is on the bottom. This right here is the charge controller. I'll have links to all of this stuff in the description below. Uh, but it's just this tiny little Chinese $17 lithium iron phosphate charge controller that uh, is doing all the work when we're solar. And around on this side, we can see just a short little pigtail. We've got a PL250 here, a little bit of RG8U, and a BNC. Very, very crowded in here. We can see we've got our, our radio's power. That's connected to a power pole here. This is the actual power wire for it, just kind of tucked in there. Our switch for the bottom two power poles. This is the switch for our 2.1 amp 5 volt USB. And another quick look at the top. This is a four power pole, uh, I guess, distribution block you can call it. I got this from PowerWorks. These watt meters are about the cheapest watt meters I could find online. That's what they are. They say high precision. Eh, they're 12 bucks. Uh, this bottom one I actually found was pretty accurate. This top one, not so much. There is nothing happening with this uh, meter right now. 
but it always shows there's like 0 0.4, 0 0.5 amps uh, being drawn from it, which is not the case, it's just off. The voltage is actually pretty okay, and I think the amp hours, the, the counting, the coulomb meter, I believe it's called, uh, those are accurate, so that's kind of really more what matters to me. The only meter that I have that's actually accurate like this is my PowerWorks meter, but this was like 60 bucks. I'm not trying to put that much money into this. This is more just a kit. It's a fun project, something that I do anticipate that I'll use, but the neat thing is, like I said, I can monitor all of my system's electricity. So I am going to plug in, this one here is for my home charger, this top right one. Now I could label these things, but in all reality, I built it, I know what's going where. The odds of someone else using this without me and not knowing what is going on are pretty low, so I don't know, I might label this solar and these things, but I like the clean look of what it is. So I'm gonna turn on my battery charger and we can see that this is gonna start ramping up here because right now we're pulling 1.18 amps. I've got my HT being charged, I'm charging my iPad and the radio is on. So you can see our power is ramping up there. And as this starts to charge, we'll also see our voltage go up here. You just know what's going on. It's super awesome. So right now the charger's putting out one amp. We're showing one. This is like 0 0.05 amps off. I can deal with that. That's not a deal breaker. I know that I'm putting an amp into it. And I've hooked up my 100 watt panel. Got five amps out of that. And uh, this charges it right up to about 14 point... Uh, I think I saw about 14.4 volts, which is a little low for full saturation for this chemistry, but it's doable. Uh, they usually charge up to about 14.6-ish, 14.65. So it's not getting full saturation, but that is neither here nor there. It freaking works. And then the last feature that I built into this was just this rotatable head plate. I freaking love this. I can lay this flat if I am for some reason standing over the radio looking down. I really designed this to be uh, just set like this. I've got these little kickstand feet on either side. So now it's just resting comfortably. Or, uh, depending on your angle, you can kick these feet all the way back, have it at a little bit higher angle, and work the world. I love it. There's just enough clearance for the microphone cable. Uh, buy this nut here. Plug that in, no problem. Plenty of clearance there. Love it. Absolutely love it. And then, when the sad time comes to stop playing radio, you turn everything off, put this down, kill our power, unplug some things, unplug the antenna, turn our meters off, we can keep the mic plugged in, wraps up there, closes nicely. I've got room here. I'll probably use a little bag like this. This is a bag from Shure, uh, from the microphones and things that I've bought over the years. And uh, I, I probably can fit like a little bit of coax, my antenna in here, maybe a couple adapters like a BNC to SO239 or something if I wanna use a, uh, something that doesn't have BNC on it. Throw that in the pack, close her up, and we're done. So anyway guys, I just wanted to show you my project that I've been working on. It took me pretty much uh, from Saturday until about Thursday to really get this kit completely built. If you watch the build video, it'll probably take you less time, uh, but something like this really didn't exist. I had, to, I had to make it all, so, and I had fun doing it, but I just really wanted to share this with you because that's like ham hey, radio is about building stuff and I love making antennas and I love playing with them, but I love this part of it too. And now I have one, so I'm very excited about that. If you have made an HF Go Box or a VHF UHF Go Box or a solar generator, anything that has to do with this, I would love to hear from you. The best way to share that is on Twitter. You can hit me up on Twitter at K8MRD. And that way the whole Twitter universe gets to see it. Unfortunately, we can't leave, uh, we can't leave pictures in the YouTube comments, but leave a comment if you've built something or 
you know, maybe what you might have done differently or uh, what I might have forgotten that could be added. Honestly, there's not much more stuff I can cram into here. It's very tight. But I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear different ideas. And just, uh, I'd love to see more of these things actually being used. Because I, I feel like I said, there's a lot of the VHF, UHF side of the hobby that builds these. You never see these on the HF side out in the wild. So I wanted to kind of be one of the first. I know that like the hamrito.world guys have uh, some, some go boxes that they make and they sell. But uh, nothing like this. So... Uh, that's all I got guys. Thanks so much for watching. The build video is also going to be coming. Uh, you can check that out and see what I did. But in the meantime, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, do that. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the bell so you're notified when I make new videos. But more than anything, just have fun playing ham radio. Thanks for watching everyone. 73 from KMRD Radio Stuff.